Hello. Okay, so this is my second attempt at this video. I have finished all of Karen Strong's wine. Kind of do a drinking game halfway through this video, and I realized I wasn't recording in the last one, so I just ended up um, a little buzzed and with no video. So we are trying this again. All right. It's okay, I only have work first thing in the morning. Let's go. Okay, so the week before Halloween, I believe it was, yeah, it was the week before Halloween. I got pretty sick and I was just stuck in bed, couldn't go to work um, for a couple of days. So I did what any rational person would do and I tried to watch a bit of Netflix, sleep, read, then inevitably got into a Facebook argument after scrolling through my feed. Someone uploaded <laughs> some of those stupid we're a culture, not a costume, um, posts warning people not to offend others with their Halloween costumes. Um, it was posted in a university page uh, from the East Coast that one of my friends went to, and I jumped in and gave my two cents in the debate and also decided to catch up with that friend who went to the university. He was also commenting in the chat, and they were just getting super, super mad at us in the chat for disagreeing with them on the cultural appropriation thing. So my friend, who was an admin of this university group, decided to just have fun with it and made me an admin as well, just for kicks and giggles. Um, and I made a joking introduction post as their new admin in the group, where I, here, I'm going to put it up here. I just kind of say, hi, I identify as an attack helicopter. I'm really happy to be your admin here. Uh, my pronouns are I, me, and my. Please respect my landing space. And I'm also an intersectional feminist, so power plus privilege minus Illuminati is why I'm a racist and sexist asshole. Uh, the post is obviously a bit longer. I'll leave it up there for a bit. But the whole thing was just kind of taking the piss out of them because they were being very oversensitive in the conversation. They were not freaking happy about this. They were having an utter freak out, um, reporting the post and asking why a non-Trent student was an admin. And I just kept replying, telling them I identified as a Trent student, so they couldn't kick me out. And it was great entertainment for being stuck in bed sick. I also posted a photo of myself in a sombrero, asking everyone what their Halloween costumes were. And some people in the comments actually started to play along, people with a bit of a sense of humor in the group. But other people just got even more angry at me being an admin. Eventually, to the extent that they had reported me and other people in the group, to the University Human Rights Commission, I, it was either that or the social media group, um, and started a petition against the, st the student who invited me to be an admin. Um, I think I was an admin for a matter of two days, maybe less, and made three or so posts in the actual group, and it still made them mad to that extent. To the point where the university actually got so many complaints they had to issue an official response to my triggering sombrero and helicopter post. Um, so the university did what they could and got in contact with the page administration. And we were like, okay, fine, the fun is over. We'll just give people the page back. Um, and they can go back to talking about feminist initiatives and cultural appropriation. We've had our fun. I was getting a little bit better from being sick anyways. So I thought it was all kind of over then, um, but apparently not. Apparently the students are still extremely pissed. Not mostly at me either, or the others commenting in the group, but at the administration and their official response to the Facebook page that they did not run, but did everything in their power to make a safer space for these students. And <laughs> this article that they wrote, so they, they wrote an article in response to the administration's um, response to me, and it is just utterly insane. So I'm going to try and read this and comment on it without bursting out laughing. So this was published in the Trent Arthur and it's called An Open Letter to Nona Robinson and the Trent Administration. It starts with a little trigger warning. The screenshots pictured below may be triggering to some people. This is a warning that this article as well as the accompanying images discuss sensitive topics that may offend, shock, or troublesome. Oh dear. So let's start here. Your contribution to Volume 50, Issue 7 of the Arthur newspaper, entitled Conflict, Social Media, and the Trent Community, was surprising, disappointing, and concerning for many community members, including the authors of this letter. It was surprising to see that nowhere within your letter to Trent University students did you mention that you are Vice President of Student Affairs, 
we wonder how many students realize that this letter is a re reflection of how Trent administration will respond to students bringing forth their experiences of violence, concerns for their safety, and well-being while at Trent University, which leads us to why we are disappointed and concerned. Your letter and the press release published on the university's website has been the extent in which Trent administration has responded to racialized and gendered violence taking place on Facebook groups operated by Trent community members and bearing the university's name. Okay, I want to start by saying that violence cannot take place on a Facebook group. Violence is actual physical harm to your body. It is not you feeling annoyed or hearing a different opinion or being offended by a joke. That is not what violence is. And in fact, it is extremely trivializing to compare you being upset by a joke on Facebook or a different opinion to legitimate violence that people have suffered through. Their actual body being beaten or cut or anything. That's terrible of you to compare the two. Words are not violence. Sorry. Oh, right. This is also where I start the drinking game. Every time they use violence in this article, I am going to take a drink because it is just insane the amount of times they use it here. And I already did this once. Keep that in mind. So if I'm not on my A game. These responses have made it clear that the university's priority is its reputation and that they are quick to clarify these Facebook groups have no direct affiliation with the university. That's not them focusing on their reputation. They don't, they can't do anything about the Facebook page. They have no direct affiliation to the Facebook page. That's not them trying to cover their asses. That's them saying, we are not the administrators here, otherwise we'd probably do something. Furthermore, both these responses ultimately put the responsibility of making a campus community free from discrimination and harassment on the students who are experiencing the violence themselves. Okay, violence again. Okay, the university cannot protect you from the outside world. This is a Facebook group outside of university. You are grown adults. It is not the university's job to hide you from other opinions and make everywhere you walk a safe space and the internet a safe space. It says here, we too commend students that have been responding to racism, transphobia, sexism, and other forms of violence in our communities, but we certainly don't see this as solely their responsibility. Instead, as people and organizations with power in this community, we understand that addressing violence and maintaining a safer space for students to thrive and learn is our responsibility. The reputation that Trent administration is so adamant on maintaining is clearly not one that they are interested in contributing to. Instead, Trent wants to benefit from this marketable image, which is the result of students fighting to survive in a community that fails to respond to oppression and violence in any sustainable way. Fighting to survive. What is this? A nuclear follow? Chernobyl? Like, <laughs> having... What? Fighting to survive violence? That's... Because someone posted a picture of a helicopter and a sombrero in your Facebook group you are fighting to survive and requesting that your university does something about it even though they have no control over the Facebook page. This, that's insane. What did and is taking place on the Trent University and Trent University Colonial Heritage Society Facebook pages is not a debate. It wasn't an exchange of opinions that lacked empathy or active listening skills. And it certainly wasn't an opportunity for members to share information or offer different points of views. Instead, it was a group of entitled students set out to attack anyone who shared their personal experiences of marginalization or spoke out against oppressive violence. The administrators of these pages went as far as to make individuals who live far from Peterborough and have no affiliation or likely knowledge of Trent University administrators of the group. Okay. It was a page for people to share ideas and information. You guys just got extremely offended by people having different opinions and making jokes and now are comparing that to violence and marginalization when you were totally free to post your own ideas. One of these individuals was Lauren Southern, who while living in Vancouver is internet famous for attacking people and instigating violence with her hateful views. <laughs> what? instigating violence and attacking people? I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm not even that internet famous, but I'm pretty sure it's just for disagreeing with feminism for the most part, but I guess in your progressive SJW world, disagreeing with feminists 
is attacking you and is violent, instigating violence and a hateful view. <laughs> Stop violating me with your different opinions! Southern, while celebrated by many supporting violent comments on the Facebook page, contributed nothing but disgusting, transphobic, sarcastic comments that undermined trans people's existence. She also posted a picture of herself in a sombrero, her Halloween costume according to her, the horror. Miss Robson, are you familiar with troll culture? If not, you can learn quickly from the images taken from this Facebook group that were shared with you by members of the Trent community. A troll is a contributor to an online discussion whose participation is intent on offending and upsetting others. Many participants in these Facebook pages had no desire to actually engage in a dialogue. Their only interest in the person on the other side of the screen was their personal relationship to the topics, insofar that it granted the trolls greater opportunity to hurt them. Southern's participation in this Facebook group is a great example of internet trolling, as her goal of inciting violence against trans people is made apparent when she announced that her pronouns are I and me, and that she identifies as a helicopter. Okay, can you imagine being the <laughs> Trent administration and reading this? You can tell that her goal of inciting violence is real because she jokingly identified it as a helicopter. I can't imagine being the university staff reading this. Okay, but I actually do want to make a serious point here. Um, a helicopter is not a gender. I'm not making fun of transgender people, although I think that making fun of everyone is okay. I'm making fun of how easily everyone in this Facebook group got offended. Being trans everything is a joke. Yeah, no, yeah, but no, I mean, you, you, that's not a thing, right? You can't, you can't change star signs. <sighs> how dare you? Siobhan was speaking her truth. How trans star sign phobic of you? No, no, no. And when it comes to actual transgender people, even if one doesn't agree that people can be transgender or they adamantly believe that they can, most people accept that there is a debate to be had there. Why? Because there are a decent amount of points on either side regarding biology. Can one have a male or a female brain with opposite genitals? Or what about hormone treatment? Can one really change their gender, testosterone, estrogen levels, hermaphrodites, the rate of suicide? Is this just mental illness? Should we support it? How should we treat it? There's a real nuanced debate to be had there. When it comes to identifying as a table or a helicopter, there isn't a debate there. It's a very different situation, and that's why it can be so easily joked about. But you know what I find really funny is that I guarantee if someone in your, one of your feminist clubs that was on Tumblr all the time, that wasn't me typing that they were a helicopter, came out and said, I identify as a helicopter, I bet you guys would have a very serious moral dilemma and probably end up treating them like a helicopter and giving them space for their copter blades out of fear of being called transphobic even though <laughs> that would be hilarious and ridiculous. She proceeds to only respond to people by correcting any pronoun they use to refer to her, including you demanding that they respect her by using I instead. This isn't funny, and it is absolutely violent. In that Southern encourages others to make a mockery of trans people and to disrespect their identity. <laughs> usually if you have to preface something by saying it's not funny, it's usually pretty funny. This contributes to an attitude that produces a society in which trans people disproportionately experience physical violence and discrimination in our communities. While Southern is not invested in our communities or even present to respond to our comments, you, you could have sent me a Facebook message. It seems quite obvious that her invitation to join in on the violence on the Trent University Facebook group was an attempt for the Trent students who were participating to distance themselves while still igniting violence and hate in our communities. Okay, I can tell you right now that all of the jokes and ridiculous sombrero and helicopter posts were all me. It's not some grand conspiracy to ignite violence in your community. Fortunately, they did not hide their identities despite their best attempts, and most of the Trent students who participated in the violence... Oh my goodness. I've already done this once. Like. <laughs> That's why that bottle's empty. Even those that hid behind face fake Facebook profiles are known to us and you, Miss Robinson. Your letter calling for Trent University students to engage in empathic dialogue undermines the reality that these issues of violence on already marginalized students are not new at Trent, nor are they limited to social media. 
what has previously been labeled as political disagreements in differing ideo ideologies between left students and conservative students is in actuality purposeful attacks to further marginalized students already existing in the margins. In particular, this violence has been directed towards students of color, indigenous students, trans students, queer students, and women. Whether or not such violence is committed online, the impacts are very real. No, they're not. The impacts are not real. You, you don't go home, or you don't get bruises from reading comments online. You don't break bones from reading comments online. I feel like I need to get that Tyler the Creator quote up here. Like, just shut off your computer. It's not, it's really not that hard. Whether or not such violence is committed online, the impacts are very real. There are tremendous impacts on individuals' mental health, feelings of security and safety in our communities, and ultimately this violence affects one's ability to access their education and participate in Trent community. You can still go to class, you can still read your textbooks, um, you can still participate with the community. They had a separate Facebook page. Plus, I was only there for two days. Um, feelings of safety and mental health. You can shut off your computer, leave the Facebook group, still talk to your friends on campus on there. Like, the exaggerations are amazing. Students who are writing violent comments on Facebook are in our classrooms, on our buses, in our communities. They're violent beliefs and attitudes don't disappear when they sign offline. They impact the ways in which they interact with one another every day. We would like to extend respect and appreciation to the First People's House of Learning for making a counselor available to Indigenous students who have been impacted by online violence. And our organizations will continue to offer any type of support to students who are experiencing this sort of violence in the Trent and Peterborough communities. So, Ms. Robinson and all the members of Trent's administration, it is not too late to respond in ways that actually address violence in our communities. <laughs> what are they supposed to do? You, you actually have a counselor available for people who have been impacted by online violence. I really hope that counselor just tells them what a power button is. I cannot imagine being Miss Robinson reading this and just wondering what am I supposed to do? This chick who is shitposting lives, lives across the country and was only there for two days and these students are so freaked out and annoyed that they have created this whole message to me for simply saying, hey, we don't own this Facebook page, we do not run it, but we spoke to the administrators and fixed the situation and they're still messaging her, telling her to end violence. I, this is utterly insane and it really tells you a lot about the attitude on campuses today and how entitled they feel to have spaces where people don't make jokes, how entitled they feel to have spaces created for them by other people, by the university, where they don't have to hear other opinions or they don't have to feel offended. It is not too late to recognize that this is not an issue of encouraging students to be empathetic when engaging with different ideas and opinions, that this is not an issue of how the anonymity of the internet creates a kind of dialogue that results in people lashing out and making assumptions, that this is not an issue of freedom of speech. The right to voice your opinion does not trump a person's right to live without discrimination and violence, and that this is certainly not an issue of maintaining Trent's reputation. No, this is about safety. <laughs> Safety from shit posters living on the other side of the country. But seriously, this is an issue of free speech. The problem is you, you don't know the actual definitions of the words discrimination and violence. You think people disagreeing with you and people making jokes online are discrimination and violence. Whereas these things should be completely allowed under free speech. You guys are just, you keep redefining language so that you can control other people. So it finishes here. This is about our commitment to building a space in which students of all different experiences can learn within the inclusive environment dedicated to social change that Trent University promises. What follows below are screenshots taken from the Trent University and Trent University Colonial Heritage Society Facebook pages. Please be advised that the content is violent and disturbing. All right, I'll post those up here. Um, none of these people posting here are me. Okay, I do want to mention that this first image here was probably the only real inappropriate over-the-top joke that was made in the Facebook page. One example. 
Despite claiming that I was using hate speech and inciting violence, they didn't include any posts by myself um, from this Facebook page. The reason being is because none of the other posts made in this group were actually quote-unquote violent or extremely offensive. They were all simply lighthearted jokes and a little bit of shit posting. So they used this one photo and are still equating it to violence, which it is not. The other photos here are from an entirely different group that I was not a part of, and I don't know the context in order to comment on them. So, all in all, a university campus across the country from me has managed to make a situation where I posted a few jokes on their page into a university issue requiring an official statement and now an article claiming I'm inciting violence and threatening the safety of the campus from across the country by posting photos of myself in a sombrero. This is the state of modern education and students. This is why we need National Offend a Student Day. This is why we need the triggering. We truly need to defend free speech in a day and age where students think people having different opinions and making jokes are discrimination and violence. I'm just gonna finish my drink at this point, but Cheers, and make sure to go offend a student on Twitter. Okay.